But not every youth subculture of the 50s and early 60s listened to rock and roll and put grease in their hair. Meet the Beatniks. The Beatniks did not listen to rock and roll, they listened to jazz, man. Basically, the Beatniks were the early hipsters. They were the alternative kids. They were rebels, to be sure, but they were intellectual rebels. They were fans of existentialism. Existentialism was a philosophy that sprung up in the post-war years. That sort of asked the question, why do we exist and maintain that basically the meaning to our own lives is based on our own individual desires and the lives we make ourselves. Existentialism. Existentialism came from France. It was actually called French existentialism originally. And the two big existentialists who were the poster children of the beatnik scene were Jean-Paul Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir. So, instead of talking about Elvis, the beatniks would talk about Jean-Paul Sartre man. They had their whole uh, own lingo and vocabulary. daddy Cool man. They were really cool, but very affected. And to have a beatnik as a kid must have been an, an, a complete pain in the arse. They were part of the beat generation, so they loved the beat poets and the beat writers like Jack Kerouac's On the Road. The center of beatnik culture was Washington Square, Greenwich Village, all of the coffee bars and the jazz clubs, but also San Francisco had quite a big beatnik scene. When beatniks got together, they would wear sunglasses indoors, they would beat on bongos, and they would recite beat poetry to each other while listening to jazz. Incredibly affected. And outrageous. Take a look at him, this guy coming out of a beatnik coffee shop in Greenwich Village. Look at what he is wearing, and this is like 1961. Take a look at her. The turtleneck sweater. This was a big beatnik thing. Uh, with a, a big pendant and skinny jeans. Look at these beat chicks. The beatniks like to go around barefoot. Because they were that cool, man. They were that alternative. They were so affected and pretentious. I love the beatniks. Beatnik boys had beards. This was in the clean-cut Cold War era. They grew beards. This was outrageous and grew their hair quite long and seldom brushed it. Alternatively, many beat chicks would crop their hair very short. So they were equally as outrageous and rebellious as the Greasers, but an entirely, entirely different scene. I love beatnik style. It borrows a lot from France. Uh, this is an actress called Jean Seberg, who was sort of the beatnik movie star, with her cropped hair and her Breton shirt, which we'll discuss in a second. But the beatniks got the same bad rap from the media and from the adults as the greasers did. The blame these four men for the beatnik horror. The cult of despair is driving the teenagers to violence. Again, look, it's Ginsburg, the hate merchant. Oh, come on, they're talking about Allen Ginsburg, who, you know, went on to become such a, an establishment figure in American literature and poetry. You know, and William Burroughs, the ex-drug addict. Well, he was, he was a bit of a, a raver. The media jumped on beatniks because they were so different and so outrageous, but they were tainted with the same juvenile delinquent label as the Greasers and the Rockers and the Teds. And of course, uh, movies and books in the mainstream uh, absolutely exaggerated the beatniks. Uh, look, those beatniks, it's a cover to a book, they've spelt beatniks wrong. There's no C in beatniks. Those beatniks living in hobo love, hunting for strange kicks, dealing in startling crime. 
beatnik party, the truth about the wild orgies of San Francisco's beat generation. Look, with complete glossary for squares. Yeah, that's what the beatniks called anyone who wasn't a beatnik through beatnik eyes. There was this idea, because they were existentialists, man, they were living for today, that beatniks were always indulging in wild sex orgies. I'm sure they weren't. And smoking reefer, which I'm sure they did. And marijuana, reefer as it was known in that era, was the drug of choice. And you're going to see throughout our story of street style that drugs and street style and subcultures often go hand in hand. But there was this sort of wild, abandoned, uh, wanton image that went along with the beatnik street style and subculture. So let's talk about beatnik street style. Yep, let's dress some beatniks. Here they are, having very existential, intellectual and artistic thoughts. Because obviously, a lot of beatniks were painters as well, amateur painters, living in lofts, creating abstract art. God, they were so affected, I love them. All right, sandals. If you're a beatnik, you gotta wear sandals if you're a guy. Skinny hip-riding pants, and of course the French fisherman striped jersey, which is called a Breton top. Brittany, Breton, is a part of France uh, on the coast, where a lot of fishing is done and where people wear these tops, so we call them Breton tops in English. Why? Well, because they're French, and the beatniks loved everything French. Um, because existentialism came from France. Of course, we've got to give him a goatee beard, shades, and a beret. This is cliché beatnik attire. Gotta wear the beret because it's French. And we'll give him some bongos. What about his pal? Okay, we're going to make a more extreme beatnik. Um, sandals, and then very loose rolled cargo pants tied with a piece of string or a piece of rope. Then an open vest with nothing underneath it, made of some kind of ethnic a fabric. A serape stripe uh, from Mexico was very popular for these vests. We're going to give him a shaggier beard and longer hair, and shades, and a copy of Howl by Allen Ginsberg. All right, let's give them some girlfriends. Skinny cropped jeans, ballet slippers, Big sweaters or turtleneck sweaters were very, very popular with the beatniks. The beatniks were really the first subculture to dress all in black. Man, because they were existential. They were questioning what it was all about, daddy -o. They often wore long, very modernist pendants, which I love. And we'll give this pretty beatnik cropped hair. And this is called a gamine cut. It is not called a pixie cut. It is called a gamine. Gamine is French for kid, for a little girl. A gamine. And in France, little girls often have their hair cut very short. So this is a gamine haircut. Okay, let's give her a pal. Well, we'll give her a guitar first, because, of course, beatniks like strumming on guitars. All right. Leotard going to give her some, you know, dance tights. Winkle picker shoes. And then an artist smock worn as a dress. This predates the mini skirt, right? So just to wear dance tights and a, a, an artist smock was pretty outrageous. We're going to give her the other beatnik hair style of choice. Long and straight with heavy bangs. Shades, a beret, and we'll give her a reefer to smoke. And we'll put them all in 1950s, early 60s Greenwich Village and send them off to a jazz bar. Mocking, mainstreaming, and modernizing the beatniks. Well, even in the beatnik era, they were a target for people to make fun of, the mainstream to make fun of. Look at this, beatnik, a do-it-yourself beatnik kit, perfect for parties and gag gifts. Kit contains coffee cup, a beatnik beard, beatnik style shirt, white pants, rope belt, no buckle, plus six authentic beatnik poems. 
beatnik instructions. See, maybe they were an easy target to mock, um, but they certainly were mocked. Here is Mad Magazine. They did an entire issue that was a, a satirical beatnik issue. The Inquiring Hipster. Look here on the uh, left. Paint smears for beatnik blue jeans all colors. Paste on easily. Oversized, sweater, oversized sweaters for beatnik chicks. Knitted from carefully chosen cruddy looking 100% wool yarn. Mattel brought out a beatnik doll, the Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo was a phrase that beatniks would use. It meant cool, something was Scooby-Doo. And we'll look at Scooby-Doo, the cartoon, in a second. I dig that crazy beat, yeah. She's the singin' swinger doll. Just pull her chatty ring and she says far out things like play it cool and don't be square. And there is the uh, Scooby-Doo doll. She looks rather stoned, doesn't she? Let's give her a reefer. Oh my god, imagine waking up in the night and seeing that doll staring at you. That's terrifying. Some of you may have seen the Audrey Hepburn movie, Funny Face. There is a beatnik dance scene in it. You see, you can see the mainstream um, appropriating so much of this stuff. And then, Scooby-Doo the cartoon came out. Scooby-Doo was the dog owned by Shaggy. Look at the way Shaggy is dressed with his beard and his loose pants and the scruffiness. And he always acted kind of stoned, didn't he? So, uh, Shaggy was a beatnik. And he named his dog after a beatnik phrase, Scooby-Doo. But soon the mainstream started appropriating beatnik uh, street style and making it horribly mainstream. Look, this is from a catalogue. Look, you see the uh, smock top with a little artist palette on it. But you knew that uh, really beatniks were on the way out when this, things like this started to appear. Wrench genuine beatniks, badly groomed but brilliant. To lecture at your club, model for photographs, entertain or read poetry for fundraising or private events. It really was a phenomenon. And um, it was very short-lived, but while it was going on, beatniks were big news. And on the runway today, designers often channel beatniks.